morning children today we are going to start the last topic of the halogen compounds that is what inter halogen compounds first of all we see the definition what are inter halogen compounds any compound which is formed by two or more halogens the molecule is formed by two or more halogens they are called what inter halogen compounds there are four examples are there four different types of inter halogen compounds are there that actually x x dash x x3 dash x x7 dash x x7 dash what is this x and x dash see x means what actually a halogen which has less electronegative and more atomic size there are actually central atom is actually what central atom Next, what is surrounding X dash, X three dash, X five dash, X seven? Because seven halogens are here surrounding atoms. There are five, there are three, there are one. These surrounding are not small in size and more electronegative. Whenever you take surrounding atoms, there should be more small size. Small size can be accommodate more around the central atom. So that is the reason. This is what central atom, large atomic size. Surrounding atom, small atomic size. You can take any example. Large atomic size, small atomic size. Other words, more electronegative, less electronegative. In this case, we can take many number of examples. For X X dash, the major examples. For X three dash, C L three, B R F three, I C L three. For X X five dash, B R F five, I F five. For X X seven dash, I F seven dash. Then remaining the answer should be I L S. And all these are actually volatile soils, liquids, gas molecules. Right. So remember, the central atom must be less electronegative, and surrounding atom must be more electronegative. Surrounding is X dash, central is X. Next, what are the preparation methods? See, how to prepare what? X X dash, X C L F. I will take chlorine and fluorine. Because I'm taking chlorine and fluorine, I'm taking them also in reactants and fluorine and fluorine. In which ratio? Equal molar ratio. Equal molar ratio. If you take equals equal value, because both are gas molecules, so you can get equal value. You are going to get X X dash compound, C L F type of compounds are going to. Next, if I take what if I want to produce what X X three dash compounds, C L F three type. In that case, you take one mole of chlorine, three moles of fluorine. Is that if you want here three fluorines or three X dash, you take three moles of X dash. That is three moles of fluorine. We get three. So that is the reason I am taking here. X is the number of atoms fluorine. Less than one type of fluorine. Next, how do we get C L F five? X X five type. X X seven type. Take C L F three. Add F two. We get C L F five. How do we get I C L? How do we get I C L? Same thing. Take I O N one mole. Two in one mole. Eighty mole you take, you will get what? Two moles of ice. Again, ice will now get one mole of iron, three moles of chlorine, you will get the ice. How to get the BrF? Again, one mole of chlorine, three moles of F2, you will get BrF. Here also we are getting this one is what? To get BrF, we will take a five moles of chlorine and get what? BrF. In this way, you can get many number of inter halogen compounds. The preparation. Its properties. See, what type of bond present between this between X and X dash, X and X dash, or whatever this bond actually what actually covalent. It is not ionic bond. It is a covalent bond because between two halogens the electronegativity difference is not much. Isn't it? It's not much difference. That is the reason what happened. They exist as a covalent nature. So first thing is that all interhalogen compounds are covalent, and also they don't have any unpaired electron. I will show whether they have unpaired or paired electron in the next structures. But and what what I mean to say, these are actually diamagnetic nature covalent. Diamagnetic because it does not have any unpaired electrons. Next, it's very very important question. More reactive than halogen. Interhalogen compounds are more reactive than the halogens. Any interhalogen compound, if you observe, they are more reactive than the their halogens. For example, if you take what ICL, is it ICL is more reactive than what <coughs> their halogen, is it? 
for example when you compare with chlorine when you compare with iodine icl is what more reactive why right? because you see in halogen the bond is what very strong is the x axis is nothing but halogen is then for example you take what chlorine and chlorine this is what very strong this is very strong but between i and chlorine this bond is what actually very weak bond because of same size what happened overlapping will be strong because chlorine chlorine is same size overlapping will be strong therefore this bond will be strong whereas in icl different sizes overlapping will be different therefore bond also will be very weak weak bond therefore icl is more reactive than the chlorine is it even iodine also so question is that we may be how to take this note this question why icl is more reactive than the halogens because it has less bond the simple answer because inter halogens are having less bond this i explained it halogen bond energy is strong inter halogen bond weak bond energy therefore it is more reactive this will be less this will be what less reactive halogen is what very less reactive this one is what more we active inter halogens are more reactive because of less bond energy only except one condition is that fluorine except to fluorine because fluorine is i have just discussed this one in the first second class i think fluorine will get more repulsions because of more more repulsions what happen this bond energy is what very weak that means inter halogens are having more bond energy than what fluorine except to fluorine the inter halogen compounds are having less bond energy when compared to halogens so this is how to remember is very very important EFF is what exception is. Fluorine bond energy is exception case actually. Next we will see the some more uh, properties. Third one is a very good oxidizing agents. They are very very good oxidizing agents actually. Next physical properties. Are integrated between the two halogens. For example, if this halogen is made up of what iodine and chlorine, whatever the properties will be depends upon iodine. That means intermediate between iodine and the chlorine. Next, melting points and boiling points when you compare with halogens, inter halogens are having higher melting points than boiling points. And when you compare with hydrolysis reaction, it's a very important hydrolysis reaction. I have taken here what large size. This one is small size. Then this is another reason for more electronegative or what small size. Now on hydrolysis, the halides. This is halide. This is hypohalides. Halides comes from the more electronegative. Then hypohalides are come from the less electronegative. Otherwise, larger mixes. Then this is what less electronegative. Otherwise, large size. So large size is converted into hypohalides, whereas small size is converted into this one. More electronic into what? Small size converted into halide. You take one example: ICL acid, iodine chloride, ICL acid. On hydrolysis, which one is small size? Chlorine. More electronic into small size, converting into chlorides. Halide is nothing but chlorine. Whereas iodine is converting into this one. Hypo Like this. In any case, you will get like this. This is very important. Next, we will take the structures here. First one, we will take X H dash. X H dash. X means you know already central halogen. X dash is of the surrounding atom. Now, B X, the central atom is in seven A group element. So, how many valence electrons are there? Seven are there. One is bonded with X dash, and remaining all are what? Unbonded electrons. Lone pair electrons. So how many lone pairs are there? Three lone pair, one bond pair. Total how many? Four electron pairs. There are four electron pairs. When you have four electron pairs, S P three hybridization. The three lone pairs, the shape will be what here? Linear matrix. Next, if you observe, next to this, X S three dash. Again, I have taken seven valence electrons. Three halogens are there. I have taken one, two, three halogens with bonding and two lone pairs. Total how many? Three plus two, five electron pairs. When you have five electron pairs, it will convert into sp3d hybridization. Now the structure looks like this. First of 
First bond, this one. First, two, three. One, two, three. Remaining two lone pairs like this. This shape will start T shape. The shape will be T shape. Next, X X pairs. Again, I am taking seven electrons. How many bond pairs are there? Five. So I am taking here five bond pairs. One lone pair is there. So five plus one equal to six electron pairs. The hydrogen will be strictly D two. So I have taken five bond pairs here. One, two, three, four, five bond. One pairs. One, two, three, four, five. One is lone. The shape will be a spare plane or pyramid. Next, X X seven dash. So seven bond pairs are there. So I am taking seven bond pairs and total. Seven is S P three D. You have to add this one. Three plus three six plus one here. Seven. So I'm taking seven bonds like this. The shape will be pentagonal by ten. Next, finally we will take users. So only one use is better. Uh, most useful use is what? Fluorinated ligand, which provides the fluorines. So I'm taking what? C L F three. Best fluorinating ligand. So this is providing fluorine to urea. Urea and urea converting into urea hexafluoride. So it is providing fluorines, fluorinating agents. So providing the fluorines. What are the use here generally? The enrichment of uranium of 235 to remove some impurities. So that will react with what C L F three. That impurities can be removed very easily. Remaining fluorine will be preserved. So this is about the entire halogens. With this, what happens? We have completed the halogen compounds. Group sixteen.